Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. First of all, let me express my gratitude to FAO for this providing this opportunity to share some of our experience on mechanization solutions for building resilience, improving productivity, and reducing environmental footprints, especially in smallholder systems of South Asia. When we talk about mechanization, I think it's very critical for sustainable intensification of the agricultural systems and also the transforming, especially the smallholder agriculture through sustainable intensification to achieve the critical goals of reducing poverty, improving the growth of agriculture, mitigating the climate change and also achieving the land degradation neutrality goals. So mechanization is integral part of the agricultural intensification process and has a key role in achieving these goals what I described just early, briefly. Farm mechanization is also essential agricultural input with the potential to transform the lives and economies of millions of the rural families. So if agricultural mechanization efforts are to succeed, there is an urgent need for all the concerned actors, be it the farmers, supporter, researcher, extension agent, planners, or the policy makers, to understand and, and contribute to the agricultural mechanization efforts across the entire farming systems and with a value chain perspective. When we talk about the transition toward the sustainability, the management factors which are really critical for transitioning to the sustainability includes the tillage and crop establishment, biomass management, water management, nutrient management, weed and pest management, which has implications for the energy or the cost of production, the adaptive capacity of the systems, the greenhouse gas emissions, the productivity, and also the resilience. And for all those factors, the mechanization is critical. Now, when we talk about the mechanization, and I'm sharing this from South Asia, the smallholder system, there has been a lot of innovations in terms of the scale appropriate mechanization for sustainable intensification, whether you talk about zero tillage, managing the crop residues, and also the improved seed metering systems to improve the time efficiency of the agricultural production systems, because time efficiency is the key. Also to reduce the labor, and the energy use reduce the drudgery. And I think for that, the scale appropriate seeders are important. Also the soil specific furrow openers are important. We got a lo lot of new and low cost seed metering systems, which are very precise. And also the mechanization led business models uh, through, the, through the mechanization incubators or the startups youth and also the capacity development effort. So in that context, I'll cite few examples on the mechanization from the smallholder systems of the South Asia. Now I take the first example of a very systemic innovation for sustainable intensification to provide windows of opportunity to reduce the climatic risk and also improve the food and nutritional security. And this is coming from the indo plains of the rice wheat cropping system uh, the intensive system where there are a lot of problems related to the sustainability, but how the systemic innovations, including the crop variety, the cropping systems management and mechanization can help in building the resilience and improving productivity and the nutritional security. So if you take the example, we are promoting the shorter duration rice varieties. That means you are vacating the field with early which provides us an opportunity for advancing the planting of the wheat, but then you need adapted varieties and the machines, machines like happy seeder. So once you do that, that helps in buffering the seedling stage heat stress. And also because of the early seeding, you can, you can harvest your crop bit early, which can escape the terminal heat. And that provides an additional windows uh, for introduction of the shorter duration legumes like moon bean in the rice wheat cropping system. So that's a fantastic example of the innovation where mechanization plays important role. So I think we need to harness the power of the genotype, environment and management interactions for building the resilience, 
wherein mechanization is the key. And you can see the systemic innovation for conservation agriculture or sustainable intensification with impact at the scale, the happy cedar and the super SMS, the simultaneous harvesting and planting of the crop with the zero time lag uh, without any delays and build the resilience. How you build the resilience? And you can see the example uh, and, and impact of this, this, this systemic innovation where wheat plant you know, seeding was advanced. And you can see the trends of quite a few years. You know, in 2007, you see very less area in October planting, where in 2018, 2019, you can see significant increase in advanced seeding which is uh, planted on the residual moisture. And that's where the combination of the variety and the mechanization plays important role. And you go to almost a million hectare area adopted on that, which helps in escaping the terminal heat. And when you say terminal heat, I cite the example of this year, where there was a lot of effect on the wheat productivity because of the terminal heat. But wherever you see the advanced seeding and the mechanized seeding using happy seeder with conservation agriculture, you can see there is a less effect in, in, in productivity compared to the conventional seeding and also reduction in the global warming potential or greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a perfect example coming from this year. And uh, because of, uh, because of uh, this, this criminal heat uh, we, we, and, and use of the mechanization, we could gain 0.2 million hectares of 2.2 million tons of the wheat which is costing like 57 million dollars only in Northwest India. Also, how mechanization helps in, 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 in building the resilience, but also addressing the issues like COVID. And the, this is one example where we see how the COVID impacted the labor and also transplanting of the rice, which uh, delayed the transplanting, delayed harvesting, and that lead to the lesser window of, of planting for the wheat. But when you go with the mechanized solutions like direct seeding of rice, which helps you in redu you know, reducing the labor use, addressing the labor shortage issues, and also allowing you planting your crop on time, harvesting on time. And that's how the direct seeded rice has been adopted over 0.6 million hectares in Northwest India. And I think mechanization played a crucial role. And governments are now incentivizing farmers for adoption of the direct seeded rice. Now, when we talk about the summary of this whole mechanization towards sustainable intensification in intensive cereal system, you can you can see clearly five to ten percent yield gains, the eight to seventeen percent saving in the water, twenty six to forty four percent saving in the labor, forty six to sixty two percent saving in the energy, improving profitability by sixteen to fifty six percent, and also reduction in the global warming potential or the greenhouse gas emission by 11 to 16 percent. So that's that's coming from the large data set across uh, the IGP uh, of South Asia and multi-year data and that clearly you know indicates that mechanization is really key in building the resilience, improving productivity and reducing the environmental footprint. And you can see the metadata analysis on direct seeded rice even where you know you can see uh, there is a positive effect on the productivity and also reductions in, in, in the greenhouse gas emissions. I would also like to cite one more example of a, of a technology which got impact at a scale. The laser-assisted precision land leveling, which I, I feel like a silent water revolution with impact, impact through partnership and science. I think this is one of the best examples of the NARS and CGIR partnerships where, where you see you know, with, with no laser leveler, you know, existing in 2000 to 40,000 plus laser levelers having impact at 7 plus million hectare, you know, generating employment and also, uh, you know, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, saving on the water, saving on the electricity, increased productivity. And this is one of the example of uh, public investment in a technology, a technology which is sophisticated, which is costly, but still farmers are putting resources on it because it's a complementing mechanization technology on the other mechanization. For example, if you go with the laser leveling and go with the no-till or direct seeding, the effects are positive. And that's how farmers are adopting this technology. So that's another clear example of the mechanization. So I think uh, mechanization has a key role to play in, in terms of enhancing the resilience, improving the productivity, as well as 
reducing the environmental footprints of the agricultural production system and especially in the smallholder agriculture. So with this, I would like to thank you.